it's easy to sin. Like sin is something that's like we're gonna do without thinking about it. Like you just sin, just sin. Like you don't even think about it twice. Yeah. But when you live in the spirit, now you be like, all right, hold on. This pros and cons. This is not gonna go the way God wants me to go right now. I need to go over here where God's been calling me. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the More Purpose Podcast, where we talk everything from faith to finances. I'm your host, Clarence. And your co-host, Marlon. And we are back with another episode. It's been a minute. We yes, missed sir. y'all. And has, this has been a fan favorite episode that y'all been asking for. And I hope y'all ready because we bring them back part two. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Y'all been like blowing our phone up and saying we need another episode, another episode, another episode. We got y'all, brother. We got y'all. Y'all better run this episode up. Run Let's it put, up. Run it up. <laughs> Not that. Before you even go further in this episode, like, comment, subscribe right now. You know what I'm saying? Share it to a friend. But without further ado, you know what I'm saying? We have to introduce the fam. Yes, sir. We got Lauren over here on my left. Go ahead, introduce yourself. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lauren. Hi, it's Capri. Hey, y'all. It's Amaya. And I just wanted to put this disclaimer right there. I seen y'all comments and concerns. And I just wanted to let y'all know this is a birthmark. This is not a bruise. But I just thank y'all for the love and support anyway. Yes, sir. Now, I mean, can we not let her come up here looking crazy, man? Yeah, fat. Nope. So leave her alone. It's just a birthmark. <laughs> you feel me? We don't want to jump in no comments. Nope. Listen, no cap. You have an announcement real quick? Sure do. So before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to my boy Terrence, sending us these hoodies from his Christian-based clothing brand called Seekers Club. The description will be in the bio. Make sure y'all hit him up and go cop that. Yes, sir. And if you want to know where Seekers came from, on the tag it's saying Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Because you have to seek the kingdom and then everything else. Mm. Not facts. Much love, family. Yeah. Appreciate that. (laughs) Good morning. Good Good morning. morning. Good to be back. Welcome back. Shake your hands. Welcome back, Marlon. Yeah, I wasn't up here the last time like these three powerful ladies were up here. So just to be in the presence, you know, I just, it's crazy. It's actually crazy because like, you really won't up here. Like, I won't. Yeah. I was in the room. He 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 was going crazy. They was going crazy. So imagine how this episode going to go. All right, Marlon. Right, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bible history. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> hey, Ron, good. Cut that part. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I wanted to tap into this real quick because... Today, um, this morning, I was just thinking about God's grace, and it made me think back on, have y'all seen the movie God's Not Dead yet? Have y'all seen it? It's a movie called God's Not Dead, and the movie, a student is in a college class, and his professor is basically making everybody sign a sheet saying, God's not real. He was an atheist, right? Yeah, his his teacher was an atheist. Mm -hmm. He got everybody to sign it, but it was one student that signed, God's not dead. Right. But in that movie... I don't want to spoil the movie, but I'm it's okay. Tell it. Tell it. <laughs> if you ain't watch it, go watch it anyway. I'm gonna spoil it for you. But at the end, the atheist got hit by a car. Yeah, Jesus. But even though he got hit by a car, that split second he had like five more minutes left of breath, and he was able to give his life to Christ right before he died. Yep. Wow. And maybe think about God's grace. I was like, him getting hit by a car, he could have died instantly. Mm-hmm. But that just shows you how much grace God has. You you didn't deny God God your whole life, and as yeah. soon as you got hit by a car. He still gave you that five extra oh, minutes to right. sit there and repent mm-hmm. and give your life to Christ right then and there. So it, it right. blew my mind. I was like, bro, God really be like sparing us and showing us so much love mm-hmm. and grace. That's and we'd right. be overlooking it. Like we'd be abusing it. What was you about to say though, Maya? I feel like I was having this conversation with my mom before talking about the difference between grace and mercy. And I feel like that instance of him getting hit by a car and having that five minutes left was God giving him mercy. Mercy, yeah. Right. Because I believe mercy comes for people who are non-believers and who are believers slipping. Mm-hmm. So God is granting you mercy, but the believers who are struggling with flesh and right. you know, the real, their yeah. will, we are granted grace. But those who don't believe, God is giving you mercy within that five minutes to get to know him. Mm-hmm. And That's I just, good. I love to distinguish of grace and mercy. It's, it's a partnering thing, but right. it's still, right. we don't, I mean, we don't deserve either. Yeah. Right. At all. Yeah, yeah great. So grace is unmerited favor. So undeserving favor from God. Mm-hmm. And then mercy is like, meaning I'm guilty and he's withholding his wrath. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Like I deserve, I didn't, I didn't even deserve it. to have that moment. It so it was both. Mm-hmm. That, it's both. that don't touch me. I'm like, bro, I like, he could have died immediately. Mm-hmm. Yes. But God still gave him the chance to like, actually realize what's going on. Right. And the pastor was right. Like God's time was so like perfect. Yeah. The pastor ended up coming right there. He seen him. Yes. Get yes. Came, got him on the ground. He said, "Would you like your life to Christ, man?" Yes. So I gave oh my life to Christ, God. Jesus Christ, and everything. Gave his life. Took his last breath. Was gone. Okay. But it's split seconds like that. That will determine if he go to hell or heaven, right there, yeah, right yeah, and there. Yeah. But it just touched me because I was like, bro, like God didn't even have to like give him that chance. Yeah, yeah. You did not mean your whole life, so I won't ruin your whole life. And I still, get, I still gave you that extra five minutes for you to actually come to realization of what's going on. Yeah. It was crazy to me, bro. But it also let me realize how, when it comes to His grace and everything, 
how much we actually abuse his mm -hmm. grace in a way. Literally. So like as Christians, or even just in life in general, it will be so many times where we uh, have these different chances or God will like give us sign after sign, like, all right, cut that out right there. Right. Mm -hmm. Leave that person alone over here. Or stop doing this. You right. wilding out in school, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And we'll be like, God, I got you. I hear you. But I'm gonna do my own thing. Yeah. Do your own thing, slap the wrist, don't do it no more. <laughs> right, God, I won't do it no more. Do it again. And it's like an endless cycle. Yeah. How like in uh Romans where he talks about like I I know not the sin, but I mm -hmm. keep saying it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, but it's like, bro, what do y'all think is like the way that we can really show God like we hear you and we actually want to like not take your grace for granted in a way. Mm -hmm. I be sometimes feeling like I take his grace for granted, like if I slip up or fall yeah, short, yeah, it'll be like, dang, God, I'm sorry. I did, did this again. Like, what's going on? Like, what's yeah. happening? But at the same time, it's like, he knows, like, we're human and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But my heart genuinely be like, yo, yeah, God, I'm yeah. not trying to, like, fall short right now. Mm -hmm. Like, what's happening? But which, like, what y'all think? I feel like I feel like after we actually sin and then when we get the grace that we don't, you know, like deserve and when we want to actually do something different, mm -hmm. we have to change our hearts and we have to change our minds. Because, like, it's so easy for us to just be like, all right, I won't do it again but yeah. if we're not renewing our minds and if we're not re renewing our hearts then that's just like a that's just a saying like we're not yeah, going to actually make those changes right. until our heart posture changes until our mindset change until right. we actually want to do better that fact that's facts because i feel like that also goes with um like when you fall short i feel like once you see you fall short and then god starts not going to taste out your mouth that's when you start realizing. Yes. Then you'll you'll start picking up on the environments that you be in that lead to that same sin. Mm -hmm. So it's like now I ain't feel like associating myself with yeah. that it like whatever I just did last time. Right. So it's like now nah like if you if you party all the time and nah, I don't I don't feel like partying no more. Right. I don't right. I don't have the same excitement when it comes yeah. to partying. Right. I don't have the same excitement to drink. I don't have the same mm -hmm. excitement to smoke. Right. I don't have the same excitement to hang out with this crew of people because I know last time I was here I didn't feel good after this situation happened. Right. And I feel like that's also God showing us all right. You have this feeling because this is also a sign and a trigger, basically. Facts. Like, Tommy Habits talks about that, like triggers. Basically saying, like, different triggers will lead you to fall into the same thing over and over again. Yes. So you have to know your triggers to be able to get out of them, like, to put yourself out of those situations. Bro, literally, it's like, right? Well, I'm going to just speak for me. Like, personally, after I fall into a sin or I'm in, like, a like ongoing cycle of something that's just leading me like somewhere that I, I don't want to go, I really had to take a step back and I had to ask God, okay, what is attracting me to this type of environment? Or like, what is attracting me to these people that I just continue to go back to? Because obviously like there's there's a void right. that I'm choosing not to fill with God, but I'm choosing yeah. to fill with this environment yeah. or these people. So I feel like once we take that step back and we're like, all right, God, what is it? Like, what is missing in me fleshly and like internally? And I'm looking for it here rather than going to you. And I feel like a lot of people take that for granted, like rather than taking that time and missing out, they're like, nah, I got to be here. I got to be with this person. I'm like, nah, God, I really need you to just Focus take a step back, back and really evaluate what's really going on so yeah. you can avoid it next time, like avoid your triggers. Because right. you're not going to know what your triggers are unless you really ask God, but all right, yeah. what's going on? Because, <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's big because something God was trying to show me is just like, um, pay attention to how you feel in the moment where you sin. Mm -hmm. So were, that's good. were you angry? Yeah. Were you sad? Yeah. Did, you, did you feel abandoned? Whatever you felt in that very moment, something like you said, something caused you to run to that. Yeah. And that's where that's where you form an idol at because it's like, okay, instead of coming to God, you feel like that can, that can relieve your stress, that can give you peace and different things like that. And something I also learned just as far as habitual sin is that even when you are in a cycle of sin, I found myself still being bound because when I would do a sin, I will feel so ashamed of doing it that I will keep doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But all God wants you to do is just, okay, bring it to me and we're going to work it out, you know? Yeah. And that's the problem is we continue to go back to that other God or whatever it may be, that mm -hmm. other that's idol. Mm -hmm. We pray about it to our God, the one and true living God, like God, take it away from me. Mm -hmm. But God's just looking at you like, okay, bring the emotion to me. Bring the feeling that you have, bring, bring it to me, to me and we're going to bring it off. Yeah, we're going to break it off. That's okay. God, bring that trauma to me. I also feel like there's steps to sin. Um, the Holy Spirit was putting on my heart, like, what are you opening up to yourself to that has desensitized your conviction and the spiritual fight? Like every time I'm going to a party, I might not drink, but the more I see my friends drink, the more I see them get lit, then the next time I go, now I'm drinking. Now it becomes a habit. Now it becomes an alcoholic. There's things that you open up yourself to, but if you are able to close yourself off and see it from a spiritual standpoint and not just a natural standpoint, you'll be able to take heed to not getting caught up in sin. Yeah. That's good. Do y'all think... You about to say something? Uh, I, was, I was about to say, even for me, like, the more that I focus on Jesus and everything, 
the more I don't want to sin like at all. Like the more I just keep my eyes on Jesus. I think you said that in Bible study. Like the more that I keep my focus on Jesus, I don't even think about that sin anymore. Yeah. So just keep your eyes on Jesus. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> the only thing I wanted to say is also the Holy Spirit told me to begin to pray to have a thorn in my flesh because the more you have the thorn and the more you go against his will, the thorn gets deeper. Yeah. And nobody yeah. wants to move into discomfort. So the more that's you good. feel the pain, the more you reject the sin. Yeah, yeah that's good. You start early. Make it uncomfortable. Okay. starting early. Well, that's, <laughs> that's good. That's that good. is good because the thorn kept Paul at the throne, mm -hmm. like at, at Jesus' feet. Yeah. And sometimes we all have thorns, of course, mm -hmm. but it just matters. Are you going to be at his feet or not? Or that's do you good. think you are strong enough to get on your own? Because Paul Paul said, I glorify my weaknesses, but only because God is strong in my weakness. Exactly. Not me. Not, I'm not strong. That's and that's what I'd be having to realize that, Marlon, you're not strong. So you're going right. to, and God's probably just looking at me like, the more you want to try to do it on your own, I'm not going to do this. I'm yeah. not going to go here. Yeah. I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep myself busy. Yeah. No. Until you come to me, the only one that's the all sufficient one, yeah. until you come to me, you won't be able to beat it. That's crazy. Y'all am early, bro. That's facts. <laughs> I was going to ask, do y'all think? From your own personal experience, when your parents disciplined you, do you feel like it helped you become who you are today? When you got disciplined from doing something wrong? 100%. Yeah, 100%, yeah. 100%? 100%? Yeah. I feel the same way. But I feel like in Hebrews 12, it says the same thing about how God disciplines us because he loves us. Thanks. But in saying that, I was reading and I was like, all right, cool. Matter of fact, let me, I don't even want to butcher it. Let me go ahead and read the scripture. scripture, scripture Talk to me. Talk to me. Hebrews 12, verse 6, it says, for the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one and he accepts as his child. And verse 7 says, as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. And in verse 8 says, if God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. And then I put down, I was like, all right, cool. I was like, so God's discipline is really his grace for us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Because I was like, bro, us doing wrong, he don't need to forgive us for nothing. Like, we could, mm -hmm. like you said in the last episode, I could have died of my sin right there. Right, right. But God chose to discipline me so I can know right from wrong. Right. Right. So I was reading, I was like, dang, that's crazy because like anytime you slip up, God literally be showing his grace through his discipline. Like, yeah, you might mm -hmm. have a consequence or whatever, but that's really God showing you, all right, I'm getting another chance. Yes. You, gotta, you gotta learn from it. Right. This is how you're gonna learn from it, but I'm gonna get another chance. But the same way as it said, like, as your parents, like, if you do something crazy in school and your parents, like, you get a punishment for that, mm -hmm. that's showing you don't do this no more, yeah. or it's gonna be a yeah. consequence. Like, I feel like we overlooked that. Yo, God's like really trying to spare us right now. Yeah, like, yeah. Every time we fall short, it's like, all right, you, you playing with fire. Right. I think I think that uh, that punishment is better than death, you know? For oh, man. yes. So yes. I think of it like when I was in elementary school, when you did something minor, you know, recess was like the, that was the oh. big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So my teacher, whenever anybody would get in trouble, they'd be like, okay, so let's say recess was uh, 45 minutes. They'd be like, go stand on the fence for 15 minutes. Oh my but yes. I would be Before fine because I, I, would, I would learn my lesson in that 15 minutes, but still right. be able to go and play. Right, right. But yeah. the, the days where she would be like, go stand on the fence the whole time That's and good. watch everybody play, ah, boy. I used to be like, boy. So I think, the, I think that that punishment is like, uh, he's like, okay, you're going to be on the fence for a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. You can get back in the game. But listen, you don't want to be on that fence that whole time. Listen, you go, or, or hell, basically, that's all mm -hmm. it is. And at that point, it's like, ah. I like how you said get back in the game because that's the same thing in sports. Like, you playing football. You make a bad play. You make a bad play. Mm -hmm. Coach has one, two options. Leave you in and let, let you try again mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. take you out. You're out. And you coach come and watch someone else do something. Yeah. And I have to coach you up. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, we had seen, um, matter of fact, I was watching the NBA and, uh, on the Sacramento Kings. I think it was Beasley. Ke Keenan, what's his name? Keegan? Keegan Moore, Murray. M Keegan. Murray, yeah, Murray. He had came up, wide open three, hesitated, didn't shoot. Oh, he got that boy out of there. Coach Brown, Coach Brown was like, yup, yup. Yeah. <laughs> get him out of here. Yeah. But before he could get him out of there, it was too late to sub. So he had to sub waiting for him. He had to do like by his jersey had <laughs> on the side. Next play, rebound. Came up. Came and shot the three and hit it. He made it. Yeah. And he, he told the sub go back and sit down. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like God the same way. It's like, I'm gonna let you try to figure it out on your own real quick, see if you adapt. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. But if you don't adapt, you getting out of here. Yeah. Right. Time out. <laughs> Corner. Yeah, not for real. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> but go ahead. No, go ahead. No. Oh, um, no, it's kind of off. It's on top. Oh, no, you good, you good. I feel like taking heed to discipline and correction will also keep you set apart. For sure. I think that's why a lot of us get caught up in the grace aspect and abuse it. But you don't need that much grace if you want to, if you desire to live a Christ-like life, if you desire to pick up your cross. All you need is to take heed to it, and it will keep you set apart. And in being set apart, you will see things from God's point of view, and you'll see how corrupt your actions was doing, how corrupt your actions were towards him and hurting him. Just, just take heat. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I said I was. Okay. Uh, 
on the uh, aspect of grace, I feel like it's another aspect of grace that we forget that grace empowers us to walk and do what he's called, to, called us to do. So sometimes, I know when I was first coming into Christ, I was asking for more grace, like, okay, more favor and stuff like that, but not realizing that I need grace to actually be who God called me to be. Mm -hmm. I need grace to withstand, like, sin, whatever it may be, because I was reading and you learned that grace is what we have because Jesus got up from the cross and he mm -hmm. overcame death, the grave sin. So yeah. the more we ask for grace, it's like, God, I need your grace so that I can overcome these things. So I think we forget that component that grace empowers us to actually so live a holy life or a righteous life. That's, That's so good. good. And just to um take it take it back to like our our like childhood and how we grew up with our parents. So since I was an athlete, I wasn't allowed to do much anyway. Like I didn't like I wasn't allowed to you know go to parties, do all that stuff. But I feel like God also gives us like proactive discipline like telling us what not to do before we do it right and I feel like that really helped me when I made my transition into really following God because growing up I used to be like why can I go to this party and like my mom she's like well I know what's gonna happen da, da, da. and then I'll be like no you don't like these are my friends you don't know these people but now that I'm following God I'm like I know a lot of the sin that we're I don't even want to say that we want to indulge in because it is fun but a lot of the things that we want to be a part of God is telling us beforehand I don't even want you to deal with that I don't I don't want you to even feel the consequence of that because I know it's going to come from it so I feel like that proactive discipline and teaching really helps when you're following God as well are you sensitive to his voice to be able to cling to that before you even get into it that's what I'm saying it's like if we can like hear it but are we going to listen like same thing with growing up no I don't want you to, to go outside right now to us we just like oh they don't want us to have fun right but no they're trying to shield us from what's outside because they know what's going to come from it right. I like That's that analogy, though, because when we turned 18, it was like, OK, my parents, oh, yeah. everything I taught you, I taught you. I can't keep you from going there. Exactly. I think it's the same way with God, because at the end of the day, we have free will. God's not going to mm -hmm. say, don't go to that party. God is saying, I taught you, and you know what you need to do and what you don't need exactly. to do. Exactly. It's like, now when you go out, you decide what you choose. Are you going to choose me or choose the other thing? Are you going to put yourself in that position mm -hmm. to go against me, or yeah. are you going to stay I don't even want to say like a safe haven, but kind of like a safe haven. Yeah. Like Some people look at Christians, and they look at Christians as like sheltered. I mean, I wasn't yes. sheltered, but I know like some Christians that were very sheltered. And I used to think, I used to be like, dang, like y'all ain't have no fun, da da da. But in all reality, they're battling something that I, well, I'm battling something that they didn't have to battle. Like that now, so I didn't have a taste they're, of the outside so world. They're pure. Like, so yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to fight to like maintain my, get to you. And get back to my, my pure state. Yes. Like, like, you didn't indulge in this. I didn't indulge That's what I'm saying. Up to this. Yeah. It's just like now, That's I didn't true. have a taste. So now I'm trying to fight my way back to get back to where you yes. at. Yeah. And whole time, they, they don't even have the taste in their mouth because they never even, you know, like, stepped yeah. outside yeah. of it. And now you got to change your whole palate, your whole plate. I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, you've been, you've been, you been exposed to fried chicken. Now you got to go back. Now I got to go to soup. Yeah. Now I got to eat kale. People would call my parents strict. They'd be like, your parents strict. You don't do nothing. You don't do nothing. No, they just raise me right. And that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I told, I'm going to just be honest. My dad's family, they, um... They're alcoholics. Mm -hmm. And I credit my dad all the time. I was like, Dad, you had the opportunity to get into it. You got into it, and you God didn't allow that taste to be in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it allows me to stand on not indulging in anything. Because mm -hmm. it's quick. It's in our bloodline yeah. to That's good. easily be addicted to things and not wow. be able to shake it off. But I said, I thank you for breaking that generational curse. And because of you, why would I be, abuse that? Wow. You made a way for me, and I'm going to go dip into my own things. And now I'm struggling. That wasn't called it. That's good. You can't get that cross for me so I could walk freely, Dad. So right. y'all may call it strict. Y'all might think, oh, well, why don't you do it? Do it, do it. Yeah. No, I'm good off of that. Because if I get that taste, I already know it's something you my know, flesh might like, yeah. 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 So I'm good off of that. And they be like, dang, you don't have no fun. Well, actually, this is what God is saying. Exactly. And it's like, fun. I tell you that. And it's like, you know what's 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 crazy after like what you just said? You said, I don't even want to, you know get into that because I know it's going to like have a, you know, hold on me. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy. I think it's in first Peter, how like he's saying, make sure that you stay sober minded because the enemy is waiting like a prowling lion. Yeah. That's literally like, like a door. And the devil is literally on the other side, just like waiting for you to take that first yeah. sip, mm -hmm. waiting for you to take that first step. And that's, I think that's so scary to me. Like, it's just like, I don't even want to do it because I don't know what's going to happen. But when we look at it spiritually, the enemy is waiting. Like he's just waiting for you to just taste it. But like, like he's like, just have a taste. And once you do, you just going to, no. Yeah, that's crazy because I feel like when it comes to the sin aspect, that's why it's so important to know God's voice and know when he's trying to show you what the personal conviction is that he has that you're struggling with in that season. Because mm -hmm. for me, it was alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. And going through that, God just started throwing like subtle hints that would like catch my attention when it came to any type of conversation on alcohol. So mm -hmm. first sign I had was I was reading 50 Cent's book and me being wanting to be a businessman, wanting to be a business mogul and everything. In the book, he said, anywhere he go, he don't drink. 
especially if it's like a party, a business meeting, whatever it is, he say, let's everybody else drink, but he's perceived as if he's drinking with everybody else when he's really the sober one in the group. <laughs> so he was like, when he do club, club events, club events, he was like, he'll get his own bottle that he got, but he'll get one of his people to pour it out the bottle and pour water in it mm -hmm. or pour juice or soda in it. Yeah. And it makes it look like he's lit because he said his energy can be there as lit as everybody right. else. Yeah. But really, he's aware of what everything is going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, dang, I like that. Like That really resonated with me. Then the second thing was when I went to um, I went to Atlanta to work with my boy and my mentor in there and everybody that was out there. And one of the people I was working with, he was like, um, bro, he was like 28. And he was like, yeah, bro, I don't drink nothing. I don't do anything. But when he said it, because you know, sometimes like you can hear someone say something, but mm -hmm. it just be like, okay, that's cool. Like, that's what's up. Yeah. But when he said it, it sat on my heart the whole trip. I was like, dang. Like, that's, like, that's tough to me because I was like, bro, it's a lot of people that get exposed to all that stuff early on mm -hmm. and it's like a, it has a latch on them. Yes. I don't have no latch on alcohol, but it's like, yo, like, that's, like, that's a tough thing to me. And I was like, bro, I don't drink alcohol on no crazy thing or whatever. It's like on occasions, but at the same time, it's like, yo, I really don't want to drink alcohol at all anyway, because I like the way he said it. I like the way yeah. he, I like the discipline he got. Yeah. So I want the same discipline. But I feel like I've only been aware to it because the more I've getting close to God, mm -hmm. he's already showing me ahead of time, yo, think about the past times where you fell into sin. What, what mindset was you in? Not a sober one. You won't sober. You won't sober. Yeah. So good. picking up on the tendency, matter of fact, there you go. <laughs> I was watching Jay Shetty podcast and he had a podcast with Chris Paul. And he asked, Jay Shetty had asked Chris Paul, he said, how do you go into each game, like how do you prepare for each game and to figure out how you're going to play on offense and defense? He said, Chris Paul said, if I could figure out the, uh, the person's patterns, I could figure out his tendencies. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh well, you got me. My goodness. But it felt like it felt, it felt like God was talking. To, it felt like it felt like the guy was showing me what the devil thinks of me, basically. Mm, yeah. Wow. So it's like if the devil can figure out my patterns, mm -hmm. he can figure out my tendencies. If he can figure out what what kind of girl I like, mm -hmm. if he can figure out what what's gonna get me there, what what environments I need to be in to, to slip up and fall into lust, whatever yeah. it is, right? He gonna keep putting me in that same situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's up to me mm -hmm. to be aware and be in my board enough to know. Yo, you been every time you went to sin right here, mm -hmm. it was from this pattern right here. Yeah. So it led to this tendency. Yeah. So how can we refigure this pattern so you don't even fall into it in the first place? Mm -hmm. wow. And with us, we need to all be more aware of the 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 habitual sins mm -hmm. that we fall into. Mm -hmm. Because most of the times, most people's sins that they always struggle with is the same sin over the and over again. Same one. one. Over the same one over and over again. Once like, you, you figure out after the fact, it'd be like, hold on, why you fall into this shit? What was I seen doing? this thing before? <laughs> yeah, like no, that's that's gonna be how I be. I, I think I realized I realized not too long ago. I was like, hold on, why everybody come to my life look the same, they act the same. I was like, hold on, listen, bro, mm -hmm. no cap. Listen, now this ain't now this ain't funny. Like, listen, he's sending the same actors. There's another another face. <laughs> like, come on, brother. Bro, it'd be the same thing. But it really blessed me because I was like, dang, like if you can figure out your patterns, you can figure out your tendencies, and maybe rethink on my life and be like, yo, all right, what's my patterns? What do I slip up at? And how can I prevent to even slip up in the first place? And if you can find the root of your patterns, mm -hmm. right? You can really free, like, be free yeah. from that. Yeah. As long as you focus on Jesus and everything, bro, I promise you, you can move on. So whoever feels like they attached to a certain sin, if you feel like you shackled to that sin, find the root. Mm -hmm. Ask God to show, like, start revealing to you what it is that your like your conviction is, wherever it is, and ask Him to help get you out of it. Yeah. Right. And once you get out of it, change your environment, mm -hmm. change whatever it is that's triggering you to get back into that sin. Yeah. Because once you do that, I promise you, your life will be way less stressful. Yeah. Facts. You'll be way better off. And you'll be like, you know what I'm saying? You'll be close with God. So figure that out. I want to speak on something you said. Um, I read John 10 this morning. And something that stood out to me was Jesus talking. And he said, my father set me apart so I can go into the world. And I think that's just very, um, I think it's very crucial, especially to what you said about drinking. Because I think mainly because of your calling, because mm -hmm. of God. Because like Pastor Mike said, this is, the church is the huddle. But the real work is the outside okay. of the four walls, yeah. whether we like it or not. Oh, so I feel so like, good. especially for all of us, because I feel like all of us are called to ministry in a way. I think that's why God is trying to shed so many things off of us now and set us apart now and do some things in us now so that he can send us out there to the world and yeah. we look like him and not like the other people. That's so, for example, good. those rooms you're going to be going into, God needs to set you apart now at your, the stage of life that you're in now so that when you get into those rooms, I can trust, okay. He won't conform. Mm -hmm. He won't give in to mm -hmm. this. He won't give in to that. Because at that point, you're not my representative no more. Yeah. So right now, it's practice. Yes. So look, check me out. Going right towards that. Because this scripture has been sitting on me for the last month. What is it? Since November. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. Mm -hmm. For you have been called by God. For some reason, it just kept smacking me in the face every time I read it. I'm like, bro, 
It's like, it feels like God's screaming at yeah. you. Because it's like, like you said, where God's taking not just me, but all of us, it's like, you have to live a life worthy of that calling. So if God's calling me to be in these certain rooms, to be in the secular rooms, to be able to bring God in there, mm -hmm. I can't blend in. Yeah. There can't be no room, there can't be no room for conforming to what they got going on and trying to fit in with what they got going on. No, I ain't stand out. I'm not gonna be able to stand out if I'm over here drinking and trying to enjoy myself and have fun with everybody. Nah, you need to be in that zone aware of like 50 cent in these parties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Facts. You need to know what's going on and you need to be able to spot out who I need to be ministering to, mm -hmm. who I need to be plugged into, like who I need to actually like. Be chopping it up and actually try to save a soul to who, whoever God's trying to lead me to. Because how, how am I going to hear God's voice if I'm not sober? That's, I, that's a big one. I think that's real good because I feel like I, I missed a lot of ministry moments because mm -hmm. of sin. So meaning, so mine was lust. I feel like every girl I was called to help, it ended up being lustful. Mm -hmm. okay. And I missed the ministry moment because of yeah. lust. And then once I realized that, I was like, hold on, yeah. dang, that's actually, that's OD. Like, yeah. think about somebody coming to you with a problem or anything like that, it turned into something else, but you were just called to help yeah, them exactly. and, lead, yeah. and lead them to Christ. That, you missed the assignment. You missed the assignment, and it, sin always distracts you from the assignment. Yes. It's crazy you said that, It's actually crazy you said that, because imagine how many actual, like, genuine friendships you would have if we won't think in flesh. Lust, yeah. I'd be thinking that, too. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be thinking the same thing. Yeah. Lesson, bro. Like, you think it's crazy, though. Yeah. I think it's crazy. And to that part, Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. Hey 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 I'm just going. I'm just going. No, let them rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I gotta say one more thing to like uh, living a life worthy of your calling or whatever it says. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the one of the whatever. things of that is because when God chooses you, it's never at your convenience. And I think mm -hmm. that's what I've been wrestling with the most. Is like, all right, God. Like I didn't choose this. Like real. No real nah, talk. Bro, no, he like, chose like, you. Like, like that's what Charles and this how, said. This is how I God talk to God, because it'd be real spill. I'd be like, God, I want to, I'd rather do this. I'd rather have done mm -hmm. that. You chose me, so I need you to grace me to get through these things. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I really, I can't do it without you, because yes. what you're telling me to do, out of my eyes, I'm like, uh, like, it's no way that's going to happen. So I feel like sometimes we kind of, um, we look at the call and we'd be like, you know, this is huge. But at the end of the day, God chose you to go through it. So I feel like uh, leading your life worthy of your calling is something that is going to be difficult, but the rewards will be, it will be great. You know what bless me though? Yeah. When I read that? I've caught it from, um, it's verses 1 through 4 in Ephesians 4. But I got it from um, the app filament. You know, my Bible got the mm -hmm. app that come with it. And I was reading that, John. It said, to lead a life worthy of that calling means not only to live differently from what we see modeled in the world, but also to live differently from what comes naturally. Mm -hmm. That's, That's true. Good. What comes naturally. So it's like, your flesh comes naturally, yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's why it's to live called against your flesh. Like, mm -hmm. we have to live towards our spirit. We have to live the worthy of our calling from our spirit is trying to build within us mm -hmm. because it's easy to sin. Yeah. Like, really think about that. It's easy to sin. Like, sin is something that's like, we're going to do without thinking about it. Like, you just sin and just sin. Like, you don't even think about it yeah. twice. But when you live in the spirit, now you'd be like, all right, hold on. This pros and cons, this is not going to go the way God wants me to go right now. I need to go over here where God's actually calling me. And that blessed me because I was like, dang, like sin really do be like a, it's so natural. Like, our flesh is so natural. It's like, it's so easy to get caught up in your flesh and not pay attention to what your spirit is actually trying to show you. Facts. It's, oh, you, oh no, go ahead. Go. No, no. Welcome oh, back. Okay. We dialing y'all in. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> As my dad would say. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share like a personal conviction, like when, well, when we were talking about the alcohol and like all that. So when I was like struggling OD with, with alcohol, right? I wasn't in my word like as much as I should have been. I wasn't in my word at all. But one thing that really hit me is when I was like, okay, I, like I'm using alcohol as like a intercessor mm -hmm. in a way. Like, like I was like, once I like really got deep into it and once I understood what I was doing, I was like, I was like, dang, so what did Jesus die for if I feel like I want to feel like this, but the only way I can feel like this is through this sin. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I feel like I'm using this sin as what Jesus was supposed to be in my life. Because I was like, mm -hmm. when like I did get drunk, and like I'm not, I'm not saying like from a from a party or like just from a get together. No, like it would just be me in my room mm -hmm. going through it, just drunk. And then I was like, okay, like I like this feeling. Like I like feeling light. I like feeling like peaceful. Like like there's nothing in my head. And then once I was sober up, and once I started locking in, I'm like. God, you're telling me that you can make me feel this way. So why am I relying on this mm -hmm. to get to the same result that you want to bring me to? Mm -hmm. So I feel like once, once again, once we take a step back and once we look at what we're using as an intercessor versus going to the Father, mm -hmm. that's going to really help us break out of that um, habitual sin that we keep falling into because it's just a habit mm -hmm. of how it makes us feel. So go, yeah, go ahead. Because I thought you were going to say. No, uh, so we just. Uh, I, was about to, I think um, 
what you said is kind of crazy about the drinking part because I feel like the devil always offers us something the same as God, but it's a counterfeit. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? That's all. So, okay, you want peace, pornography. You know what I'm saying? You want peace, sex. You want peace, um, liquor, liquor, whatever, Weed. whatever it may be. Yeah. So I feel like he always offers the same thing, but it's never because once you do it, it's never no fulfillment. It's a temporary. Mm -hmm. Where, whereas on the other end, it's like it Jesus is. can't offer you the eternal. It's yeah. like he said, take a drink from me, you'll never hunger or thirst again. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. I think he always offers a counterfeit. I seen a video. I seen a video on Instagram not too long ago. It was this dude, and he was talking about how do you know a counterfeit from something real? He was like, let's just look at a dollar bill. He said, you shine a light on it. He said, eh. when he said shine a light on it, the first thing I thought of was like, okay, the light is the word. He was like, yeah. measure it up by the truth. So somebody may look like a sheep, but it could be a wolf in sheep clothing. Measure it up by the word, and it's the same thing with that. Like, how do you know what's counterfeit and what's what's real? So that was crazy. Yeah, I seen that on Instagram. I'm nah, like, what that joint was that wild. Like crazy. he was like, think about it. When you give the cashier a hundred dollar bill, they, they would all. Oh. The <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. This is what he said. He said they know a real a hundred dollar bill from a fake dollar bill or whatever because when you put the light on it, it has it has the president's face on it, like yes, in the it inside. Does. So if I if I put the light if I put the light up against you, mm -hmm. it used to you should look like what's Jeez. inside of you. Oh, do you see my? You should look like what's inside of you. That's good. So they, I didn't know That's that when you put bad. a dollar to the light, it's like you yes, see something yes. in the inside of yes. it. It's like yes. a face. That's crazy. I saying, if I put the light up to you, Some. do you look like your father? And that just hit me. Do yeah, that just do crazy. you look like the father? Because yeah, that thing was crazy. Oh. I mean, at that time, oh, like oh, like I, I did. Like, also, on another end of that is like. As far as the comfort of sin, we keep looking to sin for validation. And the Holy Spirit put on my heart the other day that I've putting you, I've gotten you to a point where you need to come to me for everything. Mm -hmm. And the more you look for confirmation and validation for other people, I will not allow them to validate what I've given you because mm -hmm. you need to run to me. Yeah. Even as far as people in the walk, like I'll go to my mom, like, oh, God said this. What do you think? And she say something totally opposite. And that not that's not. That's not to say God yeah. is not using her and that she's not using wisdom, but God is blocking off that access for me to be validated from her. Mm -hmm. And so that goes to the same thing as sin. If I keep using this sin for validation at one point, at one point, am I going to run to God? That because is, yeah. he's, when I was living in sin, when I was living in a world, he took my taste away from sin. And so every time I forced myself to indulge in anything, it was not comfortable. And I was just feel comfortable. Feel terrible. Like, yeah. well, just disgusting. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, this ain't even it. Like, it's not pleasurable. My mind is not there. But God, mm -hmm. like, where are you? But it's because he's not allowing these things because he's trying to pull me out of that. And the more mm -hmm. I fight against it, the more it's still not going to be good. Mm -hmm. So. Now, nah, that's that's facts, though, because I was talking to, um, I'm going to name drop my boy Bryce. He ain't here. <laughs> but I saw him Bryce earlier, and I was saying, like, be like, look, look at how far we came, like, from back in high school where, like, if someone said, hey, yo, alcohol party, this, this, and that, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it won't know. It won't know like, oh, nah, I'm good. It was not like, yeah. what's up? Yeah. It was like, what's up? But now someone bring it up, it's like, nah, we good. Like, I was like, look at the spiritual maturity of like, where we're actually growing and how God's like, not going to taste out of our mouth. Like, mm -hmm. and that's the same for everybody. Like, it's not going to always be like an overnight thing. Sometimes it might, sometimes it's the actual yeah. process because strongholds are sometimes stronger on different people than others. Yes. But in that situation, it was just a tough way to look back at where we came from as far as like, letting the bottles go and mm -hmm. moving forward to where God's trying to push us towards. Because some people won't get to where they need to get to until they leave stuff behind. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can't get to where you need to get to if you still struggle with the same sin, yeah. mm -hmm. asking God to bless you with this type of blessing. But if you get that blessing and this sin, and this sin comes with that blessing, you're going to fumble that blessing. Yeah. Uh, I think that even goes to the point of, oh, that was my train of thought. <laughs> like you just, God is not going to allow the sin to be good after a certain point. So for instance, mm. um, yeah, doing it. I've yeah. never been a partying type of person, but I always wanted to experience it. And God is like, look, that's not for you. Every time I even get close to a situation, I'm uncomfortable. And so a few weeks ago, me and Lo was out and I'm like, okay, like, this is cool. This is this is nice. I'm just fellowshipping with people. But God is like, Am I, this is not this is not for you. Capri was like, God told me I'm not going. I said, Oh, Literally. well, me and Lo, we're still gonna go. And it's, it wasn't anything bad. It was just an outing oh, with people. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the Lord is keep He's trying to keep me set apart and keep me pure so I won't be tainted by the world. And literally, once I got comfortable, shots start going out. I'm like, dang God. Oh, like, that's no, yeah, like, yeah, not like, no cap. Bro. I know what we was talking about for a minute. Okay. Oh, okay. Until she said, I'll go down. But then, like, I was, I was like, I was like, yeah, nah. That night, that night went left. But that's quick. that's him trying to <laughs> keep me from even trying to keep myself open yeah. to this. Well, I it's not that bad. I know yeah. I'm accountable. I'm not gonna drink. I'm not gonna do that. But don't even put yourself in that situation. So he's not Back. gonna allow me to even enjoy myself because I'm called from it. Back. Stay out of it. 
that was that was definitely one of those situations. I'll say like for me because I was gonna who invited us. A friend, yeah, a friend, <laughs> a friend um invited us, and like I didn't even know that it was that event going on that weekend until we went. But even like when we went, it wasn't on a oh yeah we finna get to this da da da. We were going, but still trying to not even trying to like blend in. But I found myself like still trying to hang out with the same people that I used to hang out with, or like or like just to like see how it would be because I'm not even gonna lie. Ever since I've really like locked in with um God, I never went back to the old lifestyle to just see like how it would be. Yeah. So I went out there and it was just like a lot of standing around, a lot of walking around and like people just we were just like, yeah, like yeah, yeah like like we just yeah. But it, like even even after it went left, I feel like even if it didn't go that way, I feel like we would have still got back in the car and then been like, Yeah, I think we done. Like 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 yeah, like I think we done. And I like I don't I don't think that's a bad thing either because I feel like I would have rather not rather had it go that way, but I would have rather went out there and then came back and been on some, yeah, like, I'm done, versus just going years and years. Well, like, maybe I could still do it. Or, like, maybe yeah. I can't. No, no, no. That was, like, a definite no. no you're yeah. done. And something that caught my attention there was, like, I should have been sensitive that whole night. I was not allowing my spirit to be sensitive to what God was saying and to for God to keep me moving. Like, right. y'all kept saying, you know, be sober-minded. I am sitting here sober, but I'm not spiritually sober. I yeah. filled myself with so many other things that I didn't even listen to my brother's voice telling me it's time to go. Wow. And so by that yeah. time, by that time, I'm at the mercy and grace of God. I fell. And so I'm just watching the shots go off. No, I'm, I'm like, talk about oh my God, like, yo, but now all of a sudden my voice is sensitive to you because I'm at a situation where I have to hear you. Mm. Wow. But mm -hmm. you could have, if I was sensitive enough and sober minded enough spiritually, I could have avoided this all. Yeah. But it's that show, oh. <laughs> It's crazy because in that situation, right, from my perspective, because mm -hmm. at first my friends had asked me, it was like, hey, see, you going? Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm staying at the crib. God told me to stay home. Mm -hmm. They was like, matter of fact, we staying home too. We staying home too. Day of the event. Day out. They, they hit me up. He was bad. <laughs> we seen him. Bro, they, <laughs> look, 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 they hit me up. Because me and Pri was like, yo, God sent us to stay home. Like, yeah. usually me and Pri would go. We yeah. Like, nah, we, chilling, we staying home tonight. Hit me up. It was like, see. <laughs> oh god! Oh god! <laughs> they was like, hey, yo, we all just got haircuts. We going to, we going out to the, the event. Haircut is you, crazy. You know I said, yo, <laughs> I thought we was all on the same page here. I thought we was on the same page here. Like y'all trying to leave your boy hanging. They was like, come on, pop out. I was like, come on, brothers, I can't, I can't yeah, pop nah. out. Yeah. But and seeing that when I heard that they were shooting out there, I was like, my mindset always goes to, what if I was the person that got hit? Right. If I disobeyed God and went to the event anyway, yeah. my friends wanted me to go. You step outside of grace. Yeah. You're not protected. Wow. Because God told me to stay home. We were in a dulling environment. Steps to sin. Capri said she won't go in. I should have listened to my girl. Not She didn't say, don't go, y'all. She was just like, I'm not going. I should have been sensitive enough to be like, you know what? Yeah, my sister should stay home. Even if I, I were bash, Yeah, and I wasn't bashing y'all for not going, but even I had two dreams back to back, and it was like, no, nah, like, you shouldn't go. And I had a gut feeling. I was like, you know, I don't think anything's going to happen. Yeah. You know, I'm a. I'm gonna just go. I said, no, I'm gonna just sit this out. I'm just not, I'm not gonna go. And I didn't really have the urge like the day of to go. And I, I had no work, like I had nothing to do. So I was like, why not? Like, yeah, we we was both I, off. I called Priya, I was like, hey, baby. I was like, listen. We, we was going, both we going, we staying home. And I was like, look, I was like, I mean. She's like, what, like, what you trying to do? But then we was like, ah, nah. I was like, nah, we shouldn't go. And not bash y'all for not going, but I just had a deep feeling. I was like, let me just, let me just not go. I think that's what I'm saying. Like, why wasn't I sensitive enough to? Pick up on all these little hints before. Yeah. And now I got to be sensitive when I'm at death's door. Like, yeah. wow. Death's door. Yeah. 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 I never went. So like, I, so like, I was just like, I was like, hey, boy. that's the first time. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I never, never been, I never been to. Been. Yeah, I've already yeah, been before. I never been to any. Cause like VCU doesn't. Whoa. Uh, yeah. VCU doesn't like really have like homecoming. Yeah. yeah. So like, I never. <laughs> <laughs> that went to the yeah. Flip that. So like, I never been to like a homecoming. So as soon as I got invited, I was just like, I wasn't like eager, but I was just yeah. like, dang, like I never been. I'm 22. Like this ain't should should be fun. And I can't say, man, what? Like after that, I was just like, all right, this is getting, this, this is getting too much. Yeah. But wait. from your perspective, though. My perspective was God telling me not to look back because I have already been to a homecoming. Right. That's, what, That's what my perspective was. was. Don't look back. You already experienced. Like I had, to, we did a whole Bible study on that. Mm -hmm. I was like, God was asking me, 
what are you gonna miss out on if you already experienced? What are you missing out on? We yeah. had that Bible study literally. Was it? I think it was the Monday, Monday after. The Monday. It was the Monday after. Not even gonna lie, I was like, where was this? Where was, where was this? this? Yeah. Where was this? I think these two different perspectives go well with what you just said. As far as if you look at it from a sin standpoint, mm -hmm. you guys never experienced it. Yeah. So Y'all wanted to try it. Right. 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 Put yourselves in harm's way. Yeah. You guys oh, tried it yeah. before. Yeah. They were exposed to it. Yeah. God told them don't look back. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about it now because. A lot of the stuff God is telling us don't do or don't go to, mm -hmm. of course, it's for our protection, but it's because he has something way better. Yeah, and you just, because again, John 10, I was reading, he said he's called us to live life and have it more abundantly, mm -hmm. have life more abundantly. So he just wants us to have the abundant life. And when I think of abundant life, I think of luxury. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Once you're exposed to luxury, you don't go back down. And that you know? yeah. luxury. You don't, you don't ever go back down. When you're exposed to that luxury lifestyle, mm -hmm. you don't ever go back. You don't yeah. ever go down. So if our father has called us to live a luxury lifestyle, mm -hmm. it's like why even go back and go see about that? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if it's beneath me. It has no value to you. Like none at all. If anything, it's taken away from you. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. First of all, you still disobey. That's mm -hmm. first of all. Yeah. But then two, you going you can come to realize you just wasted your time even going to the jump. Because yeah. after the event, everybody came to me and was like, see, it wasn't worth yeah, it. Yeah, it was people doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just looking. He's just looking around like, yo. Oh. I'd have, been, yeah, I'd have been looking around like, yep, waiting for him to shoot. <laughs> See, look, yeah, it's no, bound to happen. Okay. It's bound to happen. Okay, like this is this is where I feel. I don't even want to say guilty, but like low key guilty, because it's like I'm from there, right? So like I was like, why didn't I even think about the possibility of it ending up in the shooting? Yeah. And it's like, and it's like I didn't even think about it on me. I did not think about it until like afterwards. Like I like I had my hands on my hips. I was just like, <laughs> I should have known this. I should have known this. But I mean. Living, you learn. Thankfully, thank lived. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank know, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because, because, boy, right? She felt. I mean, I ain't even gonna talk well, about no, it. But, no, but it's just well, like the thing is, I, I was scared. Like, I, people, I, said, I felt like the Holy Spirit let me fall because everybody outran me, and I was like, Dang, it's not I even. Slipped, I slipped and fell, and the Lord was like, you might as well stay down there because if you get up, you are gonna get hit. And I was like, well, you got one person in a scary mood. I know, I'm Marlon. No, like, I tripped. I just on a curve. And I tried to catch myself, and I just kept going down. Yeah, she fell that. so slow. She bro, fell no. so slow, bro. Yeah. Like, oh my <laughs> God. I can just imagine you by like, like, nah. I can imagine that. Like, oh. Why you did up? Everybody oh, running. Man. You baseball slid? I did. Yes, bro. I did. Oh like, my, my stomach had a rash because of the No, grass. like. Like, no, not even to like bash right. it, but like as soon as like stuff started to go left, I was talking to my friend and then Smiley, mm -hmm. Smiley looked and then he was like, oh yeah, it's time to go. And I didn't hear him un until he like stood up. He was like, nah, like it's time to go. So me, that's when I kind of like, like got alert real quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm, aware, so like, yeah. so like I'm looking, I'm looking. And like, it's not even funny, but like, Maya was still here talking. I was like, yo, like, 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 yeah. like, like yo. yo. yo I, said, I said, I thought everybody was laughing, you here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, so, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nah, me, me and your brother, t me, boy, like, when I tell you, like, I... Okay, we're going to speak back at the car. Yeah. Off camera, huh? You know? <laughs> no, I told her. At first, at first, it's like I stopped because I realized everybody wasn't running with us. So, like, I turned around, and then I was just like, Maya. And, like, I see her on the ground. I was like, I was like, uh, ain't no way, boy. <laughs> Yo. But nah, we thank God. But we here this yeah, right? And we're not going to be in that situation again. It won't. Right? Look, because I need like, to be you gotta sensitive run, though, to the spirit. Right. But you got to run. <laughs> like, even if we, yeah. you just, you but just got to think gotta about run. it. On that same topic, right? Think about how many times God will subtly be speaking to us, but mm -hmm. we're too distracted about what's going on around us. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we had the event. We talked to our friends. This is this going on. We enjoying ourselves. We having fun. Whole time. You done got a hint from Capri. Yeah. A hint from Smiley twice. Mm -hmm. Twice. Didn't you, hear him. Like, just different things where it's like, maybe I need to take heed to what they just said. Yeah. Like, there's been a couple times where, I'm not going to lie to you, I don't think there's ever been one time where me and Marlon overstayed our welcome. Mm -hmm. We know when we... It's always a feeling. That's, it's always that that's feeling. Happened. That's one thing. When it came to any type of party me and Marlon went to, we checked every exit. We, was, we looked at every door. Back, yeah. Was. As soon as we see a group of people walk in that don't look like they match the vibe of what's going on. Yep. Yo, Molly's good? Yo, it's time to go. Yep. Go ahead, keep the car up. <laughs> go ahead. I'm heading that way. <laughs> got, bro, I promise you, like, the day's getting crazier and crazier, bro. You exactly. got to be on top of everything. Like, you have to be at Yeah, it's, it's getting scary. Let one person get riled up and get... Yeah, you got... Like, yep, yep. Yep. Let's go. Let's go ahead and pop out. That nah, oh. go ahead. No, that reminded me of a um, devotional that's actually in my uh, Bible. She pointed out how... Moses had to notice that the bush was burning, like how the bush didn't call out to him, like how he had to be aware of his surroundings to see that the bush was burning. 
So I was like, that's that's just so deep because just like how you said, there's so many things that God is caught like telling us to notice and like t- telling us to realize we're so distracted on what's going on around us. Wow. Like if if there was a whole bunch of commotion around Moses that day, he probably would have never seen nope. the bush yeah. burning because it didn't call out to him. It didn't no. it didn't throw a branch at him. It nope. was just it was just sitting there burning. burning. So exactly. if we don't notice what's right in front of us in the midst of the of the um commotion, then we just yeah. we gonna miss out every time. Wow. I'm type I almost missed out. I mean, I low key. <laughs> do you want do you want to talk on that though? The faith jump with Moses? Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> oh, I like how like that, might, that might be too. Yeah, it might be for them. Maybe we'll wait wait for another couple of episodes. The advanced class. Don't need Where are we still on the topic of sin? Because I want to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. It's not about sin though. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. How you doing? By the way. I just wanted to see if we're going to keep going or not. But no, this was on my heart earlier. And me and Capri had this discussion. Um, the Holy Spirit revealed to me what things are we incubating and calling it characteristics, but they're really spirits that we're entertaining. Mm. Like, I'm over here anxious. And people are like, oh, Maya's anxious. She just likes being to herself in the corner. But a spirit is sabotaging me from engaging because there's something that's in that engagement that will pull me back to Christ. So enabled you. Keep yes. me, get me out of my character. And so a lot of people don't call spirits spirits until they become demonic. Yeah. And yeah. she's just angry. Mm-hmm. She's just yes, she, angry. But yeah. then now when she start acting out, I was like, yo, yo that that's know. the demon. No, like you, you didn't see the signs. Yeah. I didn't see yeah. the signs. And the spirit is dealing with me. What things in my life are, am I incubating, entertaining, and flirting with spiritually that are that's not bringing good. value to me kingdomly? Yeah. So you tell them what just our little tears. A little t- oh, you talking about like the spirit mm-hmm. in the... That made you just like break. You tried to throw me in the fire. You tried to throw me in the fire. Right back at. Um, <laughs> the swoop. How about? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> no, the spirits. Um, as far as like, there's a lot of things. Um, like I said, anxious, anxiety, anxiety. angry. There, we categorize people think spirits and demonic are the same thing. They are products of each other, but demonic is become possessive. Yeah. The spirits yeah. are. Things that just okay. take heed and you all today, but mm-hmm. that yeah. was just probably a moment. She probably had right. a bad day, but that bad day keep happening mm-hmm. until yeah. until it becomes an issue and an exact problem. Y'all don't want to identify it as a spirit. We need to start calling things out in our life exactly. so that we can be able to surrender fully to Christ and understand what is of Him. If we are called to live in the fruit of the Spirit, why are we having products of anger in our life? Right, That's facts. exactly. That's facts. facts. And, and it's like I I want to speak on the mental health part of that as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of people. Well, I'm gonna just say this like world has been designed to ignore God and like everything that comes with it. Mm-hmm. So the enemy does a very good job at camouflaging himself yes. to where it doesn't look like him no more. So mm-hmm. when we see things like anxiety, yeah, depression, we're like, oh, yes. they just they just need to go to therapy. I mean, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it, but it's like, oh, they just need um these pills or like this. Yes. No, yes. they need to go to Jesus because this is a spirit that's hovering over them that's really attaching yes. itself. Right. So it's like once we when we look at it from like a world point of view oh it's just mental health it's just you know things like that but when we take that veil off no it's these spirits actually attacking this person and like i feel like that's what keeps us away from god because we don't want to acknowledge those spiritual beings that we have inside of us Mm -hmm. well not yeah but i feel like i feel like once you find yourself in jesus he will expose to you what it is and then he can lead you to therapy so there's nothing wrong with therapy it's healthy things and resources and connecting to other people that's why he's placed us yeah placed mm-hmm. them here but first you have to identify yourself in him and yeah. he Facts. expects the truth that's good i feel like people overlook the one of the most simplest scriptures i think in the bible faith without works is dead mm-hmm. it's like i have faith that god can deliver me from this mm-hmm. but it still requires works yeah. to help outside Facts. Yeah. Facts. get, get yeah. that done right. so like if you're dealing with like a, a something where you're like you're not communicating right or you have like trauma whatever it is yeah god can help you Mm-hmm. But go do the work too, so yes. he can help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So true. You might need a therapist to heal right. from this situation. That's you might good. have to talk about it out loud to mm-hmm. a person that you don't know right. to actually help heal from it. Mm-hmm. But until you do that, until you put the works in there, you're not going to see the results that you need right. to see because right. you're not matching the works with the faith. Yeah, Jeez. Pastor Mike said he was talking about this, and he was saying like the altar is a catalyst for deliverance. So meaning, mm-hmm. yes, you can get delivered, delivered. like right there on the altar. Yes, God can mm-hmm. deliver you from anything. Yeah. Right. But when you step outside of this church, you have decisions to make. Yes. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, you got to believe good. I'm delivered, so now I need to make this decision. Mm-hmm. Right. That's good. And I remember when you was talking about 
a lot of people, you said in Bible study, a lot of people really had an authentic relationship with Christ during COVID because you were stripped of the church. Mm -hmm. So that was your work. You yeah. had to find God outside of that. And that was another thing the Holy Spirit put on my heart, that the body of Christ is getting weakened out because we all going through this shift. And life is life and for yeah. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And because life is life and it's like the enemy is sifting us as weak, like, dang, like, mm -hmm. I could pull you out. But this is when you have to work that word and you don't need yes. to depend. I mean, don't. Yes, go to church. Mm -hmm. But you can't be so dependent on church. And my brother said it best. Get into your word because once you get in that word, it's like texting God. Yeah. Make efforts to yeah. seek him That's daily good. because he will help you to build that relationship with him. But if you just keep going to church. Yeah. I I'm sorry. Go I ahead. think COVID was just a wake up call that a lot of people have found foundational leaks. Mm. Like, you know, in your car. Jesus. Like So my BMW, I had, it had like a hole, a puncture in the bed. Oh and every time I would put gas in it, it's like the meter would just keep like, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh. What is happening? So, mm -hmm. for example, I'm filling myself up with the word, but then when it's time to like use the word, I can't yeah. even exert no energy. I can't Jesus. even use what I've been exactly. given. It's like going in one ear mm -hmm. and going one out, out the other ear. And I realized that it was a foundational problem mm -hmm. because my foundation wasn't laid on the right things during that time. Everything that was getting put in. So coming to church, hearing the word from my dad, which is mm -hmm. our pastor, hearing the word, it go in one ear, go out the other ear, the falling other. from underneath the car. Every time. Every time I had to keep going to the gas station, keep going to the gas station until I figured out that it was a hole underneath my bedding, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, the body of the car. So I think COVID was just a moment where people realized it was a foundational leak. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have leaks. And one thing about the foundation is that it's something that you don't see but mm -hmm. it's the most impactful part. Yes. So the foundation mm -hmm. of a house, I learned this in real estate, is that it can have roaches and termites eating up the foundation of the house. And you may think the house, the house looks beautiful on the outside, mm -hmm. like a million dollar house. But if that foundation is getting eaten up, they got to take the whole house down. Yeah. Marlon, are you okay? Yeah, are you all right? No, I'll be so sad. I'll just say that to everybody. Right? <laughs> just, I just had to check. What ain't go over your head? Cause that was crazy. No, that was really But crazy. no, that's how I be feeling sometimes. Like I was really a putting gas in my car and it was like, but where's the gas? Yeah. He, like he, real talk. He, he, Nah, no won't even like it won't even fluctuate. It'll say, okay, you got gas. So I'm thinking I have enough gas. Didn't have none. On the side of the road. Yeah. Like, how did I get here? I yeah. my boy. <laughs> That's the same thing with like people too though. Like they can be everything that you want on the outside. They are beautiful, but that mm -hmm. but and their foundation right. is either there's either nothing there or it's very, very cracked. Yeah. And yeah, hold even, it to the light. Hold it to the light. Hold it yeah. to so you can see the yeah. inside. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, is there Jesus in you? Uh, Jesus in you. Sir. Like, oh, sorry. Jesus there you go. Oh. Nah, that foundational leak got me, boy. Yeah. That's good. Nah, no cap. That's going to get clipped and, up for sure. And it's okay, though, because I think um, a lot of us have foundational leaks now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't want to go through the work to actually deconstruct and actually go backwards. Mm -hmm. Like, unbuild, like, take stuff yes. out actually get back to the base because we spent so long so many years like you get what i'm saying though mm -hmm. so we spent so many years like building on top but when you build on top of the wrong foundation eventually it will crumble yep and i had to realize that i was building on top of like hurt trauma yes so wow. I'm on top of wow. but now in this season of my life right now god is telling me okay take the pieces away yeah wow. peeling like the layers that. back and yep. it, it takes more work it does but it's beneficial mm -hmm. the rewards That's are great Fuck think me. back on cars when they when they told Lightning McQueen to pay the road and he wanted to rush and get out of there. Mm. The next season. I told you, I just watched this movie last week. Don't get me started. <laughs> I, 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 I'm gonna rewatch it now. Like, Thank Holy Spirit, he's gay to me. And when he rushed and did it, the road was all messed up. The foundation wasn't laid mm -hmm. right. Oh, well. So he said, well, like, you ain't going nowhere until you redo this road. Yeah. And like you just said, sometimes yeah, you have to peel back, you have to scrape it up. Scrape it all off again, get back to the root and do it again and actually go through the process of what God's trying to yes. push you through so you can actually lay the right foundation. So wow. it can be a smooth road to where you need to go. Yeah. But if you're trying to rush the process, if you're trying to skip steps, if you're trying to get to where, like, trying to hurry up and get to where God's trying to get you without going through everything that you need, like the character development, the right. actual things you need to be able to steward what he's trying to give you, mm -hmm. you're going to have to keep starting over. You're going to go mm -hmm. through the same cycle. And I think that's the problem because we we do it in our own way to avoid pain. Mm -hmm. But yeah. alignment hurts. I, I haven't worn my retainers in two months. I put them on today. I put them on today and I feel like I almost got a headache. My God. Like, I'm not even talking about it. It felt like I was having a headache because I had to put my retainers on. So alignment always hurts because at the end of the day, it's like, I'm surrendering. I'm giving up my way for your way. So I want to have it this way, but I know that you're doing this for a reason, for the but long run. That's it, though. It's like, I feel like that's what separates the called just from everybody else. Because, yeah. like, when you are a person that is called to hire, you have to go through that process. Like, you have to go through that alignment. And if you're not willing to go through it, then you just not one of the ones. You yeah. feel me? But if you are, then you have to get broken down, tear, tear it apart. And yes. No, about to, about to you, like what you just saying, back to my uh, the analogy about the retainer is that 
the more I restrict or the more I run, the more I don't put the retainer on, is mm-hmm. the worse it hurts. The more it hurts. Yeah. The, I when, I, when I just listen and put the retainer on, they said wear it every night. When I just put it on, it don't be no pain because I'm used to it. So I'm used to saying yes to God. So when God say let them go, it don't hurt as bad. Mm-hmm. When he say let them go, I can let them go. When he say go this way, Bro. it don't hurt as bad. Habitual I didn't, obedience. I didn't cling on to that. I didn't cling on to that for that long. Bro, because but, habitual but. obedience. It's like versus like habitual sin. When you are so used to being obedient, then it's like not even going to affect your day to day no more. Right. Like yep. that's just a habit. You know what's crazy though? Because <laughs> that's OD. But it sometimes it do hurt. Cause think about when you catch a cavity, right? Mm-hmm. It hurts to get the tape, the tooth taken out of your mouth. Yeah. But it's actually better for you in the long run. It, it is. It is. Definitely. But think about your friends that's in your friend group that you have to let go of. Mm-hmm. Or people that's in your life that you got to let go of. It hurt to let them go, but, but it, they're, really, easier. they're really a plague Yo, and, and to your spit. If you keep the rotten things in your mouth, it will affect the ones that is good, too. Ooh. One ba- oh, man. That's it. Apple. That's it. The rotten <laughs> apple. <laughs> nah, that's good. That's good. Dang. No, that's crazy. Jesus. Yeah. That's what I just told lie. me. I didn't know where we went for a second, but like, <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was good. Back to Lightning McQueen real quick, though. Oh. I, to to I watched that movie last week. I just watched it. I don't know what made me watch it. At my age that I'm at now, I watch Disney movies in a whole new so light. Meaning, boy. Bro, I think it's just about cars. I didn't realize Lightning McQueen or Cars is just about the wilderness season. Mm-hmm. If you actually watch it, from the, it. If you watch it from the very beginning, he was a rookie. He was very prideful. And... He didn't have a team. He kept switching teams because he was like, I don't need nobody. Mind you, remember, the cars, they need a team to change the tires and stuff to get them back on the road. He fussed his team out. They quit the job and everything. He ends up going, because it was a three-way tie in the race. They had, a, they had a big race in California. He's on his truck, Mac, the big truck. <laughs> They're on the way, and Mac is telling him, and it's so funny because Lightning McQueen wanted to do everything on his own, and Mac is telling him on the way to California, he was like, well, I'm getting tired. We need to take a rest stop. Mm-hmm. Like McQueen was like, no, like Ain't keep no going, rest, keep going, keep going. Mac falls asleep, hits the door. Like McQueen falls out of the car. I look at it as divine alignment mm-hmm. because he fell, he fell out of the truck, ended up in Radiator Springs, and this is where he learned, mm-hmm. like he learned character teamwork, he had character development, and he learned to take his hand off the wheel. Mm-hmm. He recognized that he needed people, mm-hmm. and I was like, dang, like, and it's so crazy because it was actually like the desert. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, yeah. this was yeah. the wilderness season, so that when he got to the final race, he could have won the race. But he helped the uh, the blue car. Remember, the blue yeah. car had broke down. Mm-hmm. He ended up going back and helping the car. And it was a lesson that he needed to learn for his life. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, this movie is crazy. I'm thinking it's just about cars and Beautiful racing. Movie, boy. Nah. I'm like, bro, this is about the wilderness season. Yeah. Like, all that pride that he had had to leave him. And God literally, like, specifically let him to fall out of the truck, end up in a small town, mm-hmm. and unlearn everything that he had already learned. Yeah, I was like, city. yeah, that's humbling. It, it's, it's real humbling. It it's real humbling. And you, you see his mindset, though, at the beginning. He was like, I'm desperate for the piss and cup. Like, yeah. it's mine. Like, I'm that's, all he, yeah. that's, that's all he can think about. That's all he wanted. wanted. That's all he wanted. He's idolizing it. Yeah. And then when he finally realized. He didn't that, even want it no more. But it took for someone else. It took for Hudson Hornet to tell him, mm-hmm. it's just a cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he says the cup, I put my tools in. He said, it's just an empty cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when he when he finished the race and pushed bro in, they was like, why'd you give up the race? He was like, somebody just told me it was just an empty cup. Yeah. And walked off. I was like, that was so gangster. Yeah, like, it was so tough. Bro, that movie, OD, you gotta go back and watch. Cars is in my top five. That's a great movie, bro. That's what my That favorite. is a great movie. Nah, for sure. But like, think about it. Like, he said it's just an empty cup. Like, Matt, taking notes from that, because the season I'm in right now, this month, and, um, well, I'm not gonna say the month because we don't know when it's dropping. But, <laughs> Matt, we're in November right now. In this month, right, God had told me to take the month off, but I was bouncing back and forth with God. I was like, listen, listen, how does this one get paid, brother? Mm hmm. Not think like the like the Light McQueen mindset of I gotta have it. I have to get to it. Like I gotta work, 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 figure the stuff out. Mm-hmm. Kind of need it right now. And then when God, I was struggling with it, right? And then I was like, bro, my flesh wants to work so bad. Like my flesh wants to really get to this bag so bad. But then my spirit was like, your flesh wanna do that, but I need, you need to rest. You need to get your word, you need to lay down for a second. So when I like differentiated the two, I was like, all right, God, I, I hear what you're saying. Cause once, I feel like once you can figure out way more decisions, once you figure out, is it your flesh that, that wants to do this or is, or is it your spirit? Mm-hmm. And when my spirit wanted to lay down, not my flesh wanted to lay down, I was like, okay, cool. That means I need to lay down. Because yeah. mm-hmm. if I don't lay down, who knows what God has prepared for me to come up in the future that I won't be able to fully be able to get my all to because I'm tired. Cause I'm still overworking myself. Yeah. But in, that, in saying that, I was idolizing money at the time. Mm-hmm. Cause I was like, bro, God, like, I, basically, God, you, you know my heart. Basically, I was saying, God, I trust myself more to be able to get this money yeah. than you get it yeah. in a mm-hmm. type of way. That's real. But I feel like it's a lot of people's situation. It's like, 
God, yes. I'm allowing myself to get this money versus yeah. you bring it up in osmosis. Like, mm -hmm. you give me so much to bless me. But at the same time, it's like, that's showing like a lack of faith, a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. And going back to the cars reference, sometimes it takes for like the Holy Spirit to give you a sign of like, yo, like Hudson Hornet, it's just an empty cup. Like, in my situation, it's just money. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. money gonna come and go. Yeah. It's gonna come and go. It's what really, really matters? So, oh, boy. What really matters? Like, yeah. your health and your spirit matters way more than that paper. Yeah. And first of all, that's gonna come. I don't even know why I'm worried about it. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come regardless, especially if I'm in God's will, it's gonna come. But just in that situation, I was like, bro, this is probably the most peaceful I felt all year. Yeah. As far wow. as like actually relaxing and chilling and actually being my word, having time to chill with my friends and catch up mm -hmm. with all my relationships and everything. I didn't mean to hit your mic, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, you know what I'm saying? Like actually like get to sleep in, like I haven't had that pleasure all year. So it's yeah. like, and God's been able to like pour into me different different things and different ideas and different visionary stuff I need for the more purpose community and everything we have to do. Thanks. But it's just cool to witness and sit back on and be like, damn, imagine if I didn't obey God and start yeah. doing shoots and burnt myself out. Wouldn't, so, yeah, I would be tweaking. Go ahead. It poses, it and makes me think this question because I've been asking God this myself. Like, okay, God, I'm listening to your guidance spiritually. You've been allowing me to take off spiritually, but naturally I don't see the fruits of the spiritual labor. So what do you, what advice do you have for people who are being filled and being obedient to God, but are missing out that natural pour back into, because God is not going to allow my natural situation to go dry if I'm obedient to him spiritually, but it's like, okay, God, it's, a, it's feeling real dry naturally. Like, and how am I going to keep going spiritually if my, the word you give me doesn't align up now? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, just uh, personally, I am still going through that season, but when I really was going through that season, season, I would just like say it now about the whole graduation thing, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, God, like I've been working hard. You, like, you know, I've been working hard. What's going on? Like, what is this? And in the midst of my tears, like, I'm like, there's no way this is happening right now. I specifically heard God ask me, if I didn't allow this to happen, would you still love me? Like, would you still follow me? So I feel like even in our months of dryness, well, when we feel like it's dry, because we are getting poured back into spiritually, but just like you said, like, we don't see the natural fruits of what we're, you know, of the spiritual labor that we're putting in. I feel like when we don't see the natural fruits and we see natural dryness, we just have to ask ourselves, how much do we love God? Like, can we can we endure this just to show that we love him and that we trust him enough? So I feel like that's just like a mental question that we have to ask ourselves whenever we do feel like that. We're like, all right, you know, what is it? But we also have to say, like, is this worth your is this is this worth my obedience to you? Like, do I do I trust you enough? And that's just a question you got to ask yourself. Well, we all got to ask ourselves. <laughs> yep, that's all I have. Y'all don't win, brother. No, y'all don't win. Do we do we want to keep going? Y'all on the pivot? <laughs> Don't say pivot. <laughs> Y'all no, on the pivot? On. Transition shift. It's 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 six forty one. Six forty one. Mm. What y'all trying to get into, brother? What you trying to do? I'm, I feel like I feel like we talked about like we didn't like got on a lot. If if y'all had anything y'all want. Hmm? I just want to know what his pivot is. Yeah, talk to us. If you had a pivot, we'll pivot. Nah, I was gonna pivot to relationship stuff, but. We can talk about that. <laughs> Wait, relationship stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if y'all want to. Or did or did you want to go? Capri, what do you want to do? You just... yeah. No, you to not because... Or not? Uh, oh, pivot, brother. Oh, well. <laughs> you talking to figure out if you had to leave or not. Um, I wanted to say that in this season of where I've been at, right, transparently, it's been like a lot of character, character development of realizing like how much I have to work on still as a man and like as growing up and trying to that prepare for like future marriage. Like I feel like everything we're gonna do is in this generation basically. I feel like we all gonna get married in this generation, how move out, change states, wherever it is, new careers, jobs, all that stuff in this generation. And it's like, I'm trying so hard to prepare for everything, but God has been like, letting me actually be more aware. Like since I've been less busy, mm -hmm. it's been more, I've been able to be more aware of like my habits, my tendencies, my, Thought process when I get irritated, why I'm getting irritated. This is this is and this, and and one of the situations I was like, bro, don't want to talk about this. I'm gonna talk about mm -hmm. it. One of these situations, hey, listen. One of these situations, right? Pre, one of these situations, we was at um at an event, and I was like, bro, my girlfriend here, but 
it's like it's my friend group, so I don't know why my girlfriend here. But then I was like, yo, what am I tripping for? Because in reality, I ha I be like, cause you like my best friend. So in my mind, I look like she's my best friend. So like, she here. But at the same time, it's like you're more like it felt like he was like an angel in the room. If you get what I'm saying. Mm. Mm. But so it's like for, con, so, so it's like context. <laughs> Capri didn't go to our school. So in our school, we all have like showing like memories like our back in the day like memories and everything from high school and everything. So Capri's not really in the conversation. Mm -hmm. But while I'm looking at her, at first I was like, dang, like she's not in the conversation. But then I started thinking about it, like host reggae to me. She and the host was like, that's your that's your accountability partner. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Aww. <laughs> Aww, <sorry. laughs> but like that that's that's ways that the devil will try to like mess your mind up though. Cause like the whole time Sunday, I'm looking like, bro. Try to manipulate it. Yeah, he'll try like he'll try to make like make it make me mad. For, why am I getting irritated yeah. that my baby's here? Like my girlfriend's here, like what am I mad for? But at the same time, it was like only because she wasn't included into the conversation. So I'm looking like, dang, I wish she could like be in a conversation, but mm -hmm. she didn't go to our school, so she's not gonna be able to relate to this conversation. But at the same time, it was like she was just a ball of light in the room that was gonna hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. That's good. If I'm in an environment where she's not the only girl in the room, it's other girls around, old friends, old relationships, whatever it is, it's like her being there keeps me focused on what I need to focus on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keeping you grounded. Versus mm -hmm. letting the devil, let anyone walk up on me on some crazy stuff and I fold. They know not, not to do that while she do. Not, <laughs> but, but, but you get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm just saying in general, so it's like for my fellas out there, for my fellas. In, like when your relationship or even with your friendships and everything, treat those situations as if like you're trying to hold each other accountable. Because matter of fact, the video I sent you today, what, what was what was he talking about? Which one? The holy jump. He was saying like in marriage. Like the happy, is that that one? Yeah, but I was saying I feel like the word he was looking for was accountability. Accountable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like in that situation. I got I look he was irritated because I was hungry, but <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like most situations. You have to realize that relationships are really there, one, for happiness and everything, growth in Christ, but also to hold you accountable. Facts. Yeah. Especially if you know like old patterns. If I know in old patterns back in high school, if I used to be around these people and we used to indulge in this and this and this, why wouldn't I want my girlfriend to be there to be a light in the room to make sure I'm good? Yeah. And on my perspective, I wasn't I wasn't bored or anything. And I'm not there to be like, uh uh, Claire, don't do that. Yeah. Uh uh, don't do that. No, I'm gonna let you have your fun. But then again, I know for a fact that you are going to be a billionaire. So why would I be letting things that you do now, why would I let the things that you do now affect your future? So I'm just there to be like, you know, hey, like not too much. Or, hey, you know, watch what you're doing. Not as a mother or anything like, no, I'm doing that just as a woman because I know what you are capable of and I know what you are going to do in the near future. So I'm not trying to let you mess that up that's, at all. That's, that's a partnership right there. If Adam and Eve held each other accountable, they would never eat the fruit. Jesus. No, we can um, we can we can uh. <laughs> this too? So no, can, uh no, that's true. That's real, like yeah. boy, because he said it's not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Eve, I didn't create you just for you to just be standing around. Just for you, you to just be there. Enjoying. No, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Watch his back. Yeah, like, and imagine, even imagine if I was you know, doing whatever, or if I was getting lit or doing yeah, whatever, yeah, the yeah. enemy had, could sneak in at any moment. At any moment, and I'm not fully aware. I'm not fully sober of what's going on, and yeah. that could have messed up his near future, whatever yeah. that take place. That's good. Yeah. But in saying that, come and pre the other night we read Ecclesiastes. Is it four? Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine. It says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. Yeah. If one person falls, the other one can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Verse eleven. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. And in that situation, my mindset shifted from irritation of her not being able to be in a conversation mm -hmm. to me being like, hold on, no, she's covering me spiritually. Yeah, I got your back. Back yeah. to back. That's good. Like she's, she's my guidance. Like she's keeping me yeah. locked in and focused on what I need to focus on. Because mm -hmm. if she won't dare, who's covering me? That's good. Yeah. That's good. Not, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like in situations like those, I just wanted to provide that perspective. Cause I, don't, I don't think I've ever really heard that perspective before. It's like mm -hmm. in friend group situations, sometimes, cause I have friends that don't really be wanting a girl around in our friend group. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I was falling into that same mindset, but I was like, no, like, why wouldn't I want my girl over here? Because yeah. if anything, she's going to keep me focused on the goal at hand. Exactly. And she's going to, like Ecclesiastes says, she's going to watch my back. I'm going to watch her back. Yeah. And vice versa. If she invites me to an event, I don't really know too, like, too many people there, so I'm probably not going to talk too much. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, yeah. I make sure she's good. I make sure nobody yeah, takes advantage of her. her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dang. That was it. Okay. Couple of the years. That was good. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. All right. <laughs>
But you, having a woman who understands the vision. Yeah. Oh yeah. A lot of people are missing vision and missing mm. the identity and partnership. Yeah. And the fact that you understand his kingdom value and natural value and can hold him accountable. Who else touching that? <laughs> <laughs> But it's Thank good. You, it's good because he has a vision, you know. Yes, yes. Mm. But nothing to really follow if he didn't have the vision for himself. Yeah. But you became sub to the mission, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, submitted. Yeah. So submit to the mission. Yeah. But if he didn't have a mission, Your though, mission. Mm. What? <laughs> I like I like <laughs> the visual. Visual. I like the visuals. That's what, oh, that's that's what I'm talking about. That was beautiful though. Like it you was. really never. Well, I never heard nobody say that about mm -hmm. a girl. I mean. Not to like, you know, you feel me? Yeah. but I never, I never heard nobody put it into that perspective as far as like yeah. spiritually wise. I think it's because mainly people look at the romantics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not really looking at the purpose. Yes, romantics is a, a yeah. fruit that you can have a part of a relationship. God wants us to like to have that, mm -hmm. but the main point is for that very reason. It's a partnership it's because relationships are just to get back to what God put us on the earth to do: to have dominion, subdue, and get back to the vision. So fruitful. that comes first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Be fruitful mm -hmm. and multiply. So yeah. our vision together should be okay. Let's do this first. Yeah. The other stuff will come, but yeah. But yeah, it really blessed me because I was like, it made me, it made me, it made me look at you in a different light of love that I haven't looked at you before, as far as like the accountability aspect. Cause it's like, dang, like spiritually, it's like, yo, she's really my intercessor at the same time. And little did you know, I'm over there praying. She was. Yeah, sorry, sorry. She oh, was. I mean, you you praying. Yeah, you know I be. Mean, <laughs> if you see my mouth just moving, Bro. yeah, I'm, I'm talking to God. Listen. I could be walking to the car and I'm like, listen. <laughs> listen. I'm literally talking to the God. Listen. I don't care where I'm at. I get that oil, a night in hand. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Bro, I'm from Richmond. I got gospel music playing all loud. Priest in behind me. All I feel is somebody rubbing my arm. I'm like, oh, you know what she's praying. I'm like, I already knew she was praying. You know, little do y'all know, like, she has inspired my prayer life. And yes. I've been boldly, I've been able to boldly start praying for people and in public instead of being shy. Matter of fact, I pray this in, but it's because yes. of this seed planted. No, literally. No, oh, thanks, they made guys. me pray at the table when uh, we was out to eat with your dad. Oh, it was yeah. like, it was like, yeah, Lauren, pray over the food. It was my dad said, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he was like, yeah. But I was like, mm, uh -huh. <laughs> no. I love it. But I even I love your um factor. What'd you say? Two people come here to get back to God vision? Yeah, get Basically. back to God. Yeah. That I've never heard that before. And that because my heart. just think about just think about today's generation. The focus is on the romantics. Mm -hmm. The look. Yes. Vacation, happy, taking pictures. Mm -hmm. that's, that's that's the biggest part. Yeah, that's the main reason that all of us was put here mm -hmm. to fulfill His vision. But if we focus on the romantic part, we're losing what we were called to do. Yeah. that's the reason He put us together. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? In general, I feel like in all relationships, you you'll actually be able to better gravitate to who you need around you versus who just want to be around in general. You'll you'll mm -hmm. be able to navigate them better mm -hmm. if you understand who actually applies to the vision, who mm -hmm. doesn't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, right. And see, and I'm glad you said that because I've been hard on myself. I'm like, God, I think I raised my standards a little too high. Yeah. And mm -hmm. not that I want to take it down, but it's like a lot of people is not touching what he's giving me. Mm -hmm. And so go. to be able to gravitate to people like them, it was easy. We told y'all before, we became friends in September, shot the podcast in like the second week of September. And Literally. look at us now. Crazy. Yeah. But God is allowing me to feel that shift and connection with people. But right. the ones who don't touch it, I'm so unmoved by it. Right. But I understand it's because they're partnering in my vision to get back to him. Yeah. Exactly. That's the same thing as far as... Oh. <laughs> that's the same thing as far as like friendships too though like yeah. even if you're not in a with a partnership with like somebody but I, I i even look at what me and amaya has as like a partnership not like that but it's just like we still hold each other account she always does. <laughs> <laughs> it's like even as your close friend like if y'all have close friends in y'all lives y'all y'all yeah. have to consistently ask okay how are they just like you said how are they like bringing value to what god wants me to do and how are they pushing me every day to do better, to live better for God. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a boyfriend or like nothing, but I'm saying like, as far as a close friend, mm -hmm. as like evaluating my close friends, I am thankful to have a close friend like Amaya that's and sweet. Capri because that's exactly what they do for me. Like, yeah. even if I'm slipping and if I, first off, I run all of my ideas or my little theories like by them <laughs> yeah. before I do anything. Oh. Like, like, I'm like, so, yeah. da -da 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 -da. and then they'll be like, yeah, no, <laughs> let's <go. laughs> Yeah, let's not. Yeah, so that goes the same thing as far as like, Friendships too. You you have to have that accountability partner, even if it's not romantic. You still have to have that yeah. partner that helps you with this stuff. Yeah. This is weird. It's not weird, but whenever I think of relationships in any aspect, friendship, relationships, whatever it means, um, I mean whatever it is, they all have ship at the end. And I always just think back to um, no, 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 no,
I always think back to um who the one that ran? None um, of them. Jo- Jonah. Jonah. I always think Jonah. back to Jonah. So in relationships, who was causing my ship to sink? Mm-hmm. And that's how you should just look at your relationship. Relationship. Please. Who was on my ship that's causing the storm? You know? Mm. Yeah, we throwing like, cargo and stuff out. The problem. Yeah. I seen a. Post. I don't even know where that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Cause I seen a post. It was saying, ships don't sink. Ah. It says ships don't sink from what's going outside. Mm-hmm. It says ships sink from water getting in, inside the boat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So who's Let inside water. the boat? Like who's yeah. letting stuff inside the boat? Who's inside the boat that you need to get out of there or patch up? Like. And the storm. The storm didn't stop until, until the storm got thrown off. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. I think it's crazy. Mm-hmm. As soon as Marlon said shit, we all just yeah, like everybody ah. knew. <laughs> <laughs> like, we already knew what time it was. Stop doing me like that. I already knew what time it was. Jesus Christ. That was good. I'm like, what you got going on? I was trying to find the pills that was talking about with the ship, but it's all right. Um. But why are you looking for that? From that perspective, because like the more I think about it, I realize I really be like realizing how young we are, but how mature we all are also. So it's like. We're all going through these different phases of learning who we are, learning like how we act, how we respond to different situations. Like Pre really be helping me out. She'd be like, Matthew, I'm gonna let you have the day. You you're irritated right now, you hungry. She good for that. <laughs> I'm gonna let you have the day. She good for that. <laughs> but and through that, and vice versa, but through that, we're learning each other and we're learning each other's tendencies with that. So it's mm-hmm. like, Pre know if I'm eating, I'll call you back. I'm gonna call you yep. later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call you later. Ain't for all the talk to you. No. <laughs> no. I'm gonna call you right back. But... I'll be coming in his room while he's eating. He be looking at like, what? <laughs> What? You want to ask you a question? <laughs> you know, when it comes to that food, brother, don't, don't ask me no questions. You good for it. You be getting hangry. I'll be like, I'm like, here he goes. he be like, bro, don't you see me eating? Like, I like my food hot. I'm not trying to let it get cold. Let me hurt eating my food, bro. Then we can talk. And me, I'm going to keep asking questions anyway. I'm like Mater. Mater kept asking Lightning McQueen questions. Yeah, Mater was That's how I am with you. Just spamming. Oh <laughs> Just spamming them. Okay. But like I said, as far as like the character, de- character development aspect, where we are right now, What's some things that I guess that has changed your perspective of where you are right now in your season right now? Like relationships, friendships, personally, like how you are in your own, like your personal life. What's some things that you've been discovering right now in the season that y'all have been in, like individually? Cause right now it's been me with my irritation. Like what do I, what, like why do I be getting irritated by these different things? Like it's me asking myself that and how can I better respond in those situations or how can I better communicate my feelings towards this? Mine is pride, but not in the sense of like arrogant pride. Mm-hmm. Pride meaning like I don't need nobody help. Mm-hmm. Like I can't be vulnerable and Listen. stuff like that. And I be trying to, um, cause I be I be thinking about it. I can't even be um, transparent transparent with the lady that he sends if I don't like. You know what I'm saying? Start mm-hmm. that now. Even in my relationship with God, you know, mm-hmm. and then the community, of course, that He's given me of friends and family and stuff like that. So yeah. I don't, I don't know if I can answer it right, but one thing he has been showing me these past two weeks is I keep trying to build a routine with him to make him proud of me and build a habit, wow. but I'm not building a connection. Mm. And wow. so in doing That's that, good. I had to get back to the word. And what did the word say? Like meditated day and night. Yeah, night yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Gosh. more, so one thing, this is like kind of off topic, but one thing that used to get me is people be like, read this, read this, read that in the Bible. And I'm like, okay, I'm reading it, but it it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not, yeah. it's not. And so the Lord was like, go find something that speaks to you now because I'm in everything that you're going through. <laughs> That's good. I'm in everything that you're going through. So once you find where you are in this season in the word, you can connect with me and you can apply that to your life. And since then I've been applying that word. I've been pondering on it. And every time I hide that word in my heart that I not, might not sin against you, I see it in my day-to-day life. That's good. I like that. That's good. Um, Mic drop. I was. <laughs> um, I would say, trust for sure. Like we always think that we're kind of comfortable with God until He raises the stakes. It's like I'd be like, all right, I trust you until until He raises it higher, and then I'd be like, Ooh. I trusted you last year, baby. <laughs> right um, I would say, I would say trust and just. I would say, me right now, it really opened up my eyes as far as like relationships. Mm-hmm. I was like, y'all know how it get when it get cold outside. We be like, we be like, all right, like it's time to get a little, yeah. But, but it's like, it's like I realize I'm definitely not ready for that because I'm like, one, if I do get into something, it's not gonna be like a situationship. Like I think like I'm ready, you know, for something serious. But God has been showing me, you still haven't healed. You know, like you're still dealing with a lot of the things that you thought you got over, but you really need to take your time with me. So I would say, healing and trust for sure. I think mine is more so just speaking out more, 
Like I'm a great I'm a great listener. Like I listen all the time. But I think in this season God is just like, okay, like say whatever needs to be said. And even on the last la- last podcast, I didn't say too much in the beginning. I didn't say anything at all because the enemy was really trying to get in my mind and tell me, you know, you can't do this. You're not qualified for this. Like, he was literally telling me, like, oh, Lauren and Amaya speak better than you. Like, things that I knew that were a lie. And, y'all, like, I literally took a break, went in the bathroom, and cried. Like, I cried my eyes out. And I, even them, they came and they prayed for me. And I really appreciate y'all for that. But it's just, like, I felt like the enemy had his hind parts literally on my <laughs> neck. Because I felt like my head was, like, down. And I felt so defeated. And he wanted me to be defeated in that moment and I couldn't even pick myself back up and like I came back I persevered I pushed through but I had to go in the car and literally pray and be like God I need your strength because I really did not want to do the podcast at all after that after the meltdown I was like look y'all can have a podcast because I'm not going to do it but I just think it's just really important in this season where I just speak out and just let the Holy Spirit just speak through me and I'm gonna get better I promise I'm gonna get better but yeah I think this in this season most definitely is definitely speak out more and I'm so proud of you that's a testimony. It is. testimony. That's going to be a part of my first sermon. Y'all heard yeah, it here first. Okay. That's going to be the first sermon. You heard it. Why do you keep bringing this up? Well, I, 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 no, I know. Because Pre just be in the corner with her notepad. Mm-hmm. Every time we got Bible studies, she don't be saying nothing. Because, you know, when we first started doing Bible studies, like, it was vocal. Yeah. So everybody yes. Was yes. Everybody was talking. Everybody was talking. Except, like, Pre and a few others, of course. And I'm like, Pre, listen. I know you're a, little, you're a little ball of fire. I need you to say Facts. something. For like, sure. No, no. Facts. I knew the time was going to come. It'd be mid-Bible study. Mar- 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 be like, we need to talk. I'd be like, yeah. you need to talk. One day, you know, Capri, she's quiet, but when she's talk, like, you can feel that. it's like, you oh, listen. You it's you heavy. Feel that. Yeah, yeah, you listen. And one thing I do, when I'm, like, spiritually frustrated or I need that guidance, I'd be like, Capri, what you feeling? Like, you you, yeah. you're on the same page? And she'd be like, yeah, my, yeah, I, girl, I, feel that yeah. Too. I feel that, too. I'm like, yeah. this girl? This girl, she be looking better. It's y'all. like literally in the chat, it would be me and Amaya like trying to. We wouldn't be going at it, but like we'll be like, it will be a big disagreement. We'll be like, yo, no, da 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 da. And Capri will be quiet, and then like out of nowhere, I'll be like, Capri, and she'd be like, well, let me this what it is. And then like both of us would just go quiet. We'd be like, yeah, all right, I guess that's it. Council has spoken. Yeah, yeah, spoken. All right, cool. Yeah, be like, it's cool, it's cool. Dave, that's a voice of fire. That's what you got. Thank you. I want to get better. Yeah, it be this mostly. Stop Yeah, I don't. I, how do I say this? The devil being in your in your ear like that is an indicator of where you're trying to, like where God wants you to go. It's bad. Him just being ever scared of him. Just yes. being there is an indicator, you know. So he's, he's terrified. I'm proud of you, bro. Right? Thank you, man. I'm gonna get better. I promise. Cause he knows as soon as you. Literally, you 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 speaking on everything that he he been plotting against. Mm-hmm. It's like dang. Oof. You got me. Had to stop him. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> and certain things won't change until you speak it. It don't, it don't got nothing. And I mean, it don't got nothing to do with us. I'm not saying it like that. I'm not Go get my purse. I'm leaving. Okay. I'm not saying stuff won't change when we say it or when we see it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think for your call and your gifts, God has, because you're so quiet, mm-hmm. you're not just quiet, but you sit back, you see different things. I observe, you observe different everything. Things, yes. And you store it up. And it may be a season to where God allowed you to see these different things because I'm calling you to speak out on them. Mm-hmm. Even Abenita said that on Sunday. She oh, said that. that. She yeah, no, God. She was like that. God's going to start giving you things to set in order. She's an atmosphere setter. Yes. No, that was her. A thermometer. A thermometer the a, you're the thermometer? Thermostat. 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 Yeah. <laughs> that was right. That was right. That's it right there. Yeah. Dang. I'm proud of my she friend. She does speak up mm. one time before we came in here and prayed. And once Capri got stirred up, my spirit got stirred up. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. There it is. I, I was over here like patty cake. It's, it's a mess. Like, it's a mess. Patty cake, it is crazy. <laughs> you see us, no, she started speaking in tongues, Warping laying hands. I was like, oh, no. Once like she started weird. speaking in tongues, I'd be like, all right, yep, it's yep. serious. She yep. means business. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. I want to go, go, like, go on camera and say she tackled me before. Um, on the audio. I did not <laughs> tackle <laughs> Marley. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here, I, was like, Capri. I'm like, yep, I never tagged with you. Nope. Nope. Yeah, but mom was laid out. He was laid out. Like Capri. That was, that, was I don't know. That was God. That was God. That was all God. They gonna understand why I be talking about when I say when who, I was like, who laying hands on me? Like, who was praying? Yes. Like, I'm thinking it's a grown woman. Like, it's nah, it was. In that same night, I'm on an altar with somebody, so I'm praying with them so they feel comfortable. All of a sudden, they walk up on me, and I feel the heaviness, and I just start crying. But it's because the spirit they brought that was. 
not tormenting. Yeah. So it was getting something out of me that I didn't know was there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Jesus, this is the type of wow. friendships I got, like the friends I got. I ain't even see yeah. it, but y'all, the heaviness of the weight of y'all calling, it, it it just pushes me, man. Wow. She brought that out of me though. It's like, I know like y'all like say like, oh, how I am in my word or like just, just how I am spirit wise. Capri really brought that out of me because I'm not even going to lie. Like for the years I've known y'all, like I never seen a woman kind of maneuver throughout the atmosphere of more wow. purpose. So seeing her do it, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, so maybe like I can, yeah. you know, start to speak up a little more about how mm-hmm. I feel. And then once I seen her speaking in tongues, I was like, this isn't no grown woman speaking in tongues. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I was like, I was like, dang, I was like, I want to know how to speak in tongues. <laughs> I was like, that shit is crazy. Wow. Nah, yeah, bro, you are very like influential, but like yeah. in a in a kingdom way. Like mm-hmm. you're not, yes, yes, yes. you're not just out here. Setting trends just because you dress cute, but you are setting trends as far as living a kingdom life. Listen, you look good. It's tough. Hey, you'll fit all right. They be asking about your fit. They be asking hey, about your. He's such a hater. That's such my sister. Hate. I get that. Thank I get that. You feel me? But not before we get out of here. I want to give everybody encouragement since we were just on the topic of encouragement. Okay. Love all three of y'all. Um, I'm proud of all three of y'all. Sure. Seriously, especially you. Okay. Especially you. Like just in your own lanes and everything you do, because I know what you go through outside. And to see you step out of your comfort zone is yes. very, it's encouraging because listen, it it'd be a lot of stuff nice. that people think because I'm gifted, I'm sorry, Ron, I'm tapping my mic. <laughs> people think because I'm gifted, that means I want to do certain things. Yeah. When in reality, everybody that knows me knows, listen, mm-hmm. I could be a regular person for all I care. Marlon yeah. wants to chill in the cut. So yeah. I appreciate you just seeing you step out your comfort zone. It just really lights my heart on fire, for real. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Pri, I appreciate you. We just gave you your flowers. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Have you low? Yes. I appreciate you always, and it's crazy to see you grow, especially yes. from like high school and different things yeah. like that. And your boldness to just speak on things, it just comes natural. So I love that also that you uh use your platform to speak on different things that other yes. people want to speak on. So proud of you, God gonna take you far, my boy. Yes. Appreciate you also. You know, I, you already know. Just keep doing what you do, and just be great. You the goat. Uh, you know, I always call you the goat. I call you my mentor, the goat, trailblazer. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I don't even gotta say nothing. You feel me? You already know. Hey, 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 he was, um, um, uh, uh, I was telling the girls the other day, I was telling the girls the other day, we do this all the time, we always compliment each other, and I was like, I don't mind ever giving y'all the flowers because y'all harvested in my labor, y'all labored in my harvest, Yeah, y'all know what I'm trying to say, and so just even being able to do this, Honestly, we bounce off of each other in different ways. It had it not been for more purpose, would these gifts even be stirred in us? Right. That's true. Crazy. That's true. Isn't it? That's, crazy. Started yeah, that's crazy. crazy. Isn't it? Started with it us. Yes, it started with your partnership and it mm-hmm. stirred something in us. And yeah. Yes. That's crazy. You know, all of us, yeah. Yeah, everybody yes. Wow. wow. Everybody had to take a face step for some type of way. Every single, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, would we even be qualified to speak on the things that we're speaking on if we hadn't taken those face steps? Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm talking low because I'm kind of getting tired. Well, oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. But honestly, we're not qualified. Our yes qualified us. Jesus. Ooh, I'm just, no, I'm just saying. Like, hey. No, for real. For real. That's facts. That's that's facts. One of those ones. One of mm. those ones. Now, this is crazy. This episode is beautiful. How long we go wrong? I'm full. Yeah. Because How long has it been? Oh, oh, that's okay. the we that? that? I, I felt like we was up like an hour for thirty. Yeah. We was touching the hour by the time I. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We oh, did. We did. Okay. Oh, I, I, it was five. It was fast. Two hours. I don't think we was at like an hour thirty. I know, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. Like okay, okay, okay. okay. We did good. Like, like that was good. Yeah. That was a pretty, pretty good. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for flowing through YouTube. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. I'm, I'm so proud of y'all. I, grateful to be here. Y'all never we hear me. are like, grateful. Not say that. I'm so proud of y'all. Grateful. I love y'all so much. Oh, you guys. my boy. Damn, a fee. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for tuning in. We hope y'all enjoyed it. Please let us know what was our favorite topic in this conversation. If there's anything that y'all want us to speak on for a future episode, please drop it down in the comments. Leave a like, share it, subscribe, all that. And actually, follow them. On their pages, yeah. it, it'll be in the description if they if they consent to that. It'll be in the description. Yes. Also, make sure y'all um, leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and also instead of Patreon, scoot them to the side. We'll be doing a YouTube members only yeah. coming soon. So wow. for y'all that's already on YouTube, you don't have to go to no other app, none of that. Just stay on YouTube. We'll have the membership stuff and all that stuff set up for y'all. So hope you're excited for that because that will be like the behind the scenes content. Yeah. Like 
behind the scenes content of our conversations, even off camera, like what we just talk about off camera when we just chilling around, out to eat, whatever it is, vlogging, oh, no, um, different events that we have going on. Y'all get the first scoop on everything that we have going on. So if y'all want it that, let us know. Leave a like, leave a comment, and um, also join the Bible study group chat. If y'all not in there, yes, you know what I'm yes. definitely join. Come get updated. But other than that, y'all got anything? Oh no, we have a new outro. So I made a post. Oh. I made a post. <laughs> And the end, I promise y'all won't be talking because I didn't realize I typed it. And oh. so someone else came up and said, yo, that was good. And I was like, hold on. I read it again. I was like, that is good. But we want to start leaving, leaving y'all out with, oh, let me see I'm saying it right. Matter of fact, let me get my phone. I ain't, ain't going to mess it up. It's always more purpose. You just have to find yours. Yeah. Yeah. It is. From now yeah. on. From now on, that's how we're going to end every episode. There's always more purpose. You just have to find yours. In. There you go. Uh huh. What you mean? Time out for oh. both of y'all. But I don't mean like y'all. We appreciate y'all. Thank you for tuning into the shenanigans. Facts. One more time. There's always more purpose. You just have to find yours. Love y'all. Y'all be safe. Oh. <laughs> no, that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> find it. Love. <laughs>